everyone. This is Carol in Nebraska. I took a, a, a few short video clips to show you these little bubbler, uh, very temporary things I, I threw together just to try to attract some of the migrating birds. I especially am you know, excited about seeing warblers, which I, as I've mentioned before, I really didn't even know existed in my woods until uh, just in recent years. I have a little solar powered um, fountain just set into that bowl. Uh, this, the cord is in the way, obviously. I have the, the solar uh, panel just tucked into the, uh, the, the gutter of my house. I don't get a lot of sun here on the north side of this big hill I'm on. Oh, look at this one. Isn't he gorgeous? And truly, folks, I think what I learned from my friend Frida is, is pretty true here. I, I, I've, I fussed around with getting the bowl and a rock to hold the little, um, little fountain mechanism. But I think more of the warblers had a blast just playing in the just the very, very shallow puddle that formed on this tub that I set to hold my whole uh, bubbler setup. So I don't know. Next year, if the if the, the the bowl is all that important, just some shallow water seems to be enough to get quite a bit of action. Now, true, that little bubbling noise probably attracts them. They can hear that, I'm, I'm assuming. But uh, great fun. Uh, and just think about it for your own place. You may not even need to bother with the bubbler. Get some shallow water out near a window and see what happens. Because seeing these warblers is such a huge treat. They're such tiny little things. And they move so fast. It's, a, it's about impossible for me to see them in the trees. But here on my back porch in a very shallow bit of water has been so much fun. Keep your kitties away though. <laughs> and they're following or just, just some shots of me enjoying the trees around my place. Each year the autumn color is a little different depending on weather conditions. And with our drought this, this summer uh, without any rain for a long time, uh, we did lose some, some very large tree branches. So I'm not sure if, if we're going to lose some more trees over there. Very little fruit from the apple trees. Well, I got my pumpkins all harvested today. And I grabbed some zinnias while we were down there too. And a few flowers to play with. After we let all the little, the little critters fly away and find a new, new spot. deeply ribbed ones are sure appealing. That one's a Mousquet de Provence. Very uh, flavorful flesh in those. I think that one was to Charles Dale. This is one of the pie pumpkins. And see when the, they're little, if you'll just take um, maybe an ink pen um, and just Drag your 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 sharp uh, end of the pen or another item into the pumpkin when it's a baby. It's very easy to do. The skin's very soft. It then forms a, a raised scar over whatever message you carved in, and that grows with the pumpkin. So it's a, it's a cool thing. Enjoying some pokeberries there. Oh, 
he can't get a more gorgeous, big, beautiful plant than those, po those poke weed with the big orange stems and different shades of green in the branches. All sorts of insect life will come and visit. And then the berries are formed, which are enjoyed by all kinds of critters. But I always remind people that they are only for critters, not for humans to consume. These are some chrysanthemums. I did have a much bigger stand. Some of them have died back this past year. 